Cycle three, week six. We have three experiments to do today, and the first one is called, How Do You Feel? So we're gonna be learning about nerves, more about nerves today. So what have we already learned about nerves? Like, what are nerves? How does your sense of touch work? When we touch things, the nerves where we touch send a signal to our brain, right? To try to interpret what it is that we're touching. And what have we already learned about nerves? That they have to do with the five senses, right? So is touch one of the five senses? It is. And what are some of the parts of the nervous system? And what do we still need to find out? Maybe how do nerves send those electrical signals to our brains? There's so much that we could still be learning about. So today, the first thing we're going to try out is um, using pencils. So we have two pencils that have been taped together, and they're taped together with the tips at the very same level. And they're sharp pencils. So working with a teammate, or you could do this by yourself. I think it's better with a teammate though. You can touch your fingertip with those, with those pencils. Can you tell that there are two pencils touching you? You can, can't you? It feels, you can tell pretty easily. Now, if I touch on my arm, it really only feels like one thing. It feels very different. This is very distinctly two things. This feels like one thing touching me. Why is that? Why does it feel so different? What an interesting observation. The skin on our fingers has the ability to feel a lot more than the skin on some of the other parts of our body. That's because it has a lot more skin receptors, which are sensory neurons or nerves. We use our hands to check out if things are hot, if they're cold, sharp, or dangerous. We also use our hands to sense if things are soft, fluffy, rough, or bouncy. Our sensory neurons can detect temperature and pressure and pain. When we touch something, an electrical signal runs up the chain of the neurons in our nervous system. It goes up the spinal cord in our spine and reaches our brain, relaying the information. Nerves help us sense the world around us to get the information that we need. This is what our five senses do. Touch is one of the five senses. How can you know where your... Um, how can you know where your skin has more sensory neurons? One way is to think about where you might be ticklish. You have more sensitivities in spots where there are more sensory neurons. So where are those spots that you're most ticklish? Those are spots that have more sensory neurons. You also have a larger part of your brain dedicated to those places too. Your fingers, feet, your face tend to be very sensitive, while your arms and your elbows and your legs are less sensitive. That is just so interesting. So this is a great picture that shows some of the nerves in our body and how they run kind of like little um, strings all through our body. And then our spinal cord goes up through our, through our spine and connects with our brain. And here's another close-up of kind of what nerves might look like. And this is the electrical signals happening within our nervous system. And this is a picture of someone reading Braille, which blind people can read raised dots on paper. And because the fingers are so sensitive, they're able to distinguish the differences between the dots. And they can actually read that way. Moving on to our second experiment of the day, it's called spinning. Why do people get dizzy? Have you ever been dizzy? How do you feel when you're dizzy? Has anything silly ever happened to you when you were dizzy? Do you remember Newton's first law of motion from cycle two? 
how object in, objects in motion tend to continue moving. Do you remember that? How do your eyes affect motion sickness? Do any of you guys get motion sickness? How do your eyes affect that? Have you ever noticed that if you sit in the front seat, you get less motion sick? How do your ears affect motion sickness? Well, we're going to see if we can learn more about all of these things by testing something. So I'm not actually going to do this, but I'm going to talk you through it. So if you stand up in a place that you have a lot of space, like probably outside would be best, if you go outside and spin around five times and then sit on the ground, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think you'll notice? How will you feel and how long will you feel that way? So let's try it. So what did you observe? Did you feel dizzy? Did you feel like you were still spinning for a second when you sat down? Your body kind of felt like it was still going around even though your body wasn't moving anymore? So our five main senses of sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch work together to help us understand what's going on around us. But sometimes different senses can disagree, leaving us feeling out of sorts. Why does our brain think we're still moving even when our eyes tell us that we've stopped? Because a different part of our body says that we haven't stopped. There's actually liquid inside your ear canals and it continues to spin even after the rest of you stops. It's just like, have you ever stirred a cup of water? And you notice that it continues to circle even after you take the spoon out. That's a good one to try at home. You get a cup of water and you spin, you, you um, use a spoon to stir it up and then you take it out and it keeps spinning. Um, as the liquid in your ear moves, it hits the tiny hairs inside, and this sends the movement signals up to your brain that says, I'm moving. This is an important sense of touch from our skin that helps us to detect motion. The problem of dizziness stems from our brain's confusion over, we're actually, over whether we're actually moving or not. Our eyes tell us one thing, and our brain tells us another, and that's how we get dizzy and car sick. So the next time you feel this way on a boat, a car, an amusement park ride like a roller coaster, don't just think of what your eyes think, see, but about what your ears are feeling. And then you'll, you'll remember that's why that's happening. That is just so fun. The third experiment for today is change of pattern. This is going to be another one that's kind of experimenting with confusing your senses and confusing your brain. Are you able to concentrate on more than one thing at a time? How many signals can our brain send at the same time? How does your brain receive and send information? We know, we know this one. Nerves. Nerves are how our brain sends and receives information all over our body, right? Nerves, nerves, nerves. What do we still need to find out about then? How, how do we memorize things? At CC, we are super good at memorizing things. What are some of your favorite ways of memorizing? How do neural pathways work in your brain? We can learn more about that. So what do you think will happen when we try to pat our head with one hand and rub our tummy with the other at the same time? Do you think we'll be able to do it? Let's try them one at a time. Well, first of all, do you think it's going to be easy to do this? Have you ever tried this before? Was it easy last time or hard? Do you think it'll be any different this time? Let's, let's try something first. Just pat your head. Can you do that? Yeah? Can you use both hands and pat your head? Yeah? Okay. One hand on your belly. Can you do that? How about two hands on your belly? Yeah? Okay, then it ought to be pretty easy to do one in each, right? Okay, let's start with that. Okay, now I'm going to try and run my belly. Oh, 
that's actually not too hard, but let's try and change directions. Oh, it's not too hard. I think it's supposed to be harder. <laughs> let's try and switch hands. Oh, okay. Uh-oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm patting myself. Okay, I've, I'm slowing way down. This is much harder. So I switched to my non-dominant patting hand and it really and it really made it harder for me. See, I'm trying, I'm now, okay. So that's much harder. So if you find it easy with one set of hands, switch to the other and see if it makes a difference. At first, it was probably pretty hard for you to do, move in different patterns, but eventually you could get it after a few tries or pauses. And maybe that's why I didn't have much trouble because I've done this many times in my life. This is a fun little trick to do. Um, everything that you know how to do, including every movement you make, has been learned. As babies, we take time to learn how to grab things, how to talk, how to walk. Adults learn new things too. People with brain injuries even have to relearn patterns of movement they once knew well. How do, you, how do our brains learn? When you practice something for the first time, you dig a, a neural pathway in your brain. And as you continue practicing it, you go over and over that pathway, digging it even deeper into your long-term memory. Scientists have studied the brains in different athletes like soccer players and ballet dancers and found that they have different pathways in the movement centers of their brains. When you pat your head and rub your tummy one at a time, the task is easy because you've done that movement before. But when you combine them for the first time, you're learning a new group pattern and you have to concentrate to get it right. It's similar to the first time you learned how to pedal or steer or balance your bike. What started out as a steep learning curve, meaning it was really hard, becomes easy with practice. Eventually, you'll be able to say, it's as easy as riding a bike. That's an old saying people say. And maybe you just learned how to ride a bike in the last year or two and you remember still how hard it was to to learn it, but then all of a sudden it wasn't hard, right? Reading can be that way too. It can feel so hard while you're learning to read and then all of a sudden it clicks and it doesn't, it's not hard anymore. So that's those neural pathways being created in our brains. I just love how God has created our bodies working this way and that he has let us be able to, to take a peek into his creation and how he created us. It's just so awesome. Our God is wonderful.